And in this iCave Answers, M2 MacBook Air pre-orders, when will we get bigger iMacs, iCaveCast, what are the next M2 Macs, is Apple Care worth it, maintaining battery health, iPhone 14 versus Pro, going full time on YouTube, and overheating M2 MacBook Pros. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Randomness R asks, iCave Answers, any update on when the MacBook Air M2 pre-orders will start, any guesses? Will it be on a Friday again? So we do have kind of rumors that have come out yesterday. So let's start off there. It looks like the 14th of July is the release date. So we work back a week from that, the 8th of July. 8th of July, I think, something like that, is uh, basically the day that the orders will begin. Uh, that would be next Friday from the looks of things. That means... We won't get reviews next week, but the week after. And it'll be interesting to see if we have the same issues that we've had with the MacBook Pros with M2 in terms of the speed of the SSDs with these MacBook Airs. Fingers crossed not, but chances are yes. Um, there's also some thermal stuff, but we'll be coming to that later. Eugene King asks, IK Vances, my sweetheart is rocking a 2017-27 inch i5 iMac. Will Apple release a 27-inch Apple Silicon iMac in the not-too-distant future? I don't think we're going to be seeing any bigger iMacs uh, anytime soon, to be completely honest. I don't think this product cycle is going to have a larger iMac. I think 24 inches is the size that we're going to be getting uh, for at least the foreseeable future for this kind of product cycle, this design cycle, if you like. Um, if we look back at what Apple's done in the past, the original iMac, um, when it first came out, was the CRT display, the beautiful colored versions that we got. Um, and that was the only size. You only got the one option with that. When we then got to the next generation, the, uh, the G4s, we got the LCD panel iMacs, which was the kind of the sunflower iMacs, if you will, the ones with the lovely arm that you could move them around and we ended up getting two sizes initially which was a 15 and a 17 inch and then they went up to a 20 inch as well on the next generation from that um they also released at the same time the emac which was another crt based um imac basically it was the imac for schools for education emac for education um and that featured a larger crt screen i think it was a 17 inch and that uh, was really flat as well. I've got a couple of them in the loft. Um, let me know if that's something you'd like to see in future featuring on the channel. I think they both work, both G4s. But yeah, I, I have a feeling though on this cycle, we're going to be getting one size of iMac and that's it. If you want to go larger, then you go to a standalone display, something like the studio display with either a Mac Mini or with a... Um, a Mac Studio if you need more power. Mac Mini plus a studio display comes in at just over $2,000, which is basically what you used to pay for a larger iMac. Randomness R asks, IK Vance, any update on your podcast situation? You need to talk to Max Tech or the Genius Bar, or even get Greg from Gadget Cast or Brian Tong. So many great names. It'll help you grow your channel. I want to see you reach 100K and then a million subscribers. Okay, so here's the thing. If we were to do a podcast, would you want to see it on the same channel? Would that be a bit weird? Because you're going to have weird long-form stuff mixed in with these kind of quicker questions and answers and news-style content. Does it all work on one channel? Would we need to put it on two channels? Um, I don't really know. In terms of longer-form content as well, we were going to be doing a live stream tonight. Unfortunately, I've had to move that to tomorrow. That's purely because... Um, I've got work tonight. I've got to go and uh, do an event. So um, I'm not going to be around tonight. I am going to be around tomorrow night. So 10 p.m. UK time, which I think is like 5 p.m. Eastern in the US. Uh, that's when we're live streaming. So we'll do our last Apple week tonight. Uh, let me know in the comments anything you want me to cover. Use hashtag iCaveAnswers, why not? Or last Apple week tonight. It's a bit longer though. In terms of actually doing the podcast though, um, it's something I'd love to do. Uh, I need to make sure that my general life stuff is sorted out before we kind of get into doing more um, different types of content. Although we have got obviously Project 91 coming up. If you don't know what that is, hashtag Project 91 on Twitter, you can find out. Uh, but basically we are making uh, a Macintosh Classic 2, the fastest one in the world with M1 inside. Oh, and on the podcast side of things, if you want to kind of see a bit of a preview of what that would look like with me talking to other YouTubers, go back and check out um, IKversary. We did a whole bunch, uh, well, we did a huge long live stream. If you weren't here at the time, it was a six hour live stream. And we had on the show, Luke Miani, Brian Tong. We had the guys from Constant Geekery. We had John Prosser. It was, it was, a, it was a busy day.
Evan Rogers, IK Vances, do you think the M2 iMac refresh could come at the September event or will Apple save it for the Mac Mini event? Do you think it's possible that Apple could skip the M2 for the iMac and wait until fall 2023 to update with 3 nanometers? iCaveDave.com forward slash merch. Um, in terms of the iMac update, I do think that this, now that we've got M2 has been released, we know what M2 is, there's actually no reason that the iMac update would need to be at an event even uh, because we've already had its its redesign so there's no need to talk about that we've already had the m2 so they've already talked about that there's no need to talk about that um i don't really know why the macbook pro uh with m2 was on the event it might be because they actually knew that they were going to release it earlier at this point but the imac could easily be updated just on the website uh now with m2 they put out a nice little trailer video for it um faster better stronger some sort of Daft Punk thing, uh, and, uh, and and that's all they need to do. I don't think it actually needs to be at an event, although if they're going to do it in October, it could be the M2 Mac Mini when that gets its redesign, because that would make sense to do in October. Mac Mini M2 then comes with M2 and M2 Pro, because they're going to talk about M2 Pro and M2 Max anyway, because hopefully they're going to put out the uh, MacBook Pros then as well. And yeah, they could chuck in the iMac as well. It wouldn't make a difference. It could be their like, desktop event. If you want a desktop, here's what you can get. Maybe they could even chuck the M2 Pro into an iMac. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Actually, that would make an awful lot of sense because we're only getting the Macs in the studio. So why not have the iMac going alongside the Mac Mini? iMac M2, iMac M2 Pro, Mac Mini M2, Mac Mini M2 Pro, and then when you go up over to the studio event, which comes in, in the spring of next year, that gets the Max and the Ultra dead easy. Random Nassar asks, iCave answers, is Apple Care worth it? I usually use cases and screen protectors on my devices, so I never drop them, and I take care of my stuff. The two times, the two times I got it, I never ended up using it. What do you think? So here is the rub with Apple Care. It's basically an insurance policy, right? So the whole point is that you hope you don't need to use it, but it's there if you do. Um, if you uh, are in a position where you have a a device that you use for work and you must have that available to do your work, otherwise you can't make money, I would say Apple Care is probably a really good choice to do. Um, if it's for something like a Mac Mini, uh, you're never going to take it anywhere. You're never going to drop it anywhere. It's not going to get physical damage, so it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, if it's for an iPhone, like, can you use it with a cracked screen for a couple of days? If you had to, probably. Would you be able to pick up a cheap phone to use for a couple of days if it got really bad and you needed to replace it? Probably. I guess it just comes down to how careful you want to be with your devices. If you want to pay for a case and a screen protector and that makes you confident that your phone will survive, great. Uh, if you, like me, prefer to go with the kind of naked iPhone thing where you don't put a case on it, you don't put a screen protector on it, and you just like to enjoy the device as it is, maybe it is worth it. If, also, if you're looking to replace it at the end of the year, like it might be worth getting. And then just before you come up to your year, you get it replaced or you, you, know, you get it um, damage you pay a small excess and then you've got a brand new device basically that you can sell and uh, recoup more of your money you have to work out the finances for yourself but I would say if you have something like a MacBook Pro and uh, it's going to be very expensive to replace a display if it gets damaged and you're carrying it around a lot of the time probably worthwhile um, I would say though if it's a desktop unlikely that you're going to have damage to it probably not worth it on that iPhones, your mileage may vary, but it's insurance. If you can't afford to replace it and you would need to replace it straight away, then it's probably worthwhile. Hashtag not financial advice. Okay, before we move on to the next question, a quick merchandise update. People have been asking, and I understand why, why you can't use uh, tea in these coffee mugs. They are coffee mugs. They're available from iCaveDave.com forward slash merch. I decided I should do the test and show you exactly what happens. So let's cut to that. Now, you have been warned, these are not compatible with tea. I am not liable for any consequences of pouring tea into these coffee cups. iCaveDave.com forward slash merch. Please support me. 
Random Nassar asks iCave answers, can you do a video on how to maintain good battery health for iOS devices? What to do and what not to do, and how do you charge your devices to make them last? Cheers. Okay, I genuinely think the whole battery health maintenance thing is a myth. It's just rain dancers and people kind of making stuff up at this point. So... Back in the old days, you did need to look after your batteries. You had to kind of keep an eye on battery cycles. You had to kind of calibrate them, I guess, was what people used to call it. When you first got a device, you would charge it all the way up to full. Then you would let it run down to empty. And then you would charge it all the way back up to full again. And kind of you do have to do that with older devices that don't have the same level of battery management. However, Apple is very good these days at battery management. There are a few things that you can do which will sort of prolong the life of your battery and it's the stuff that uh, all phone manufacturers seem to be getting away from and it's also the stuff that everyone seems to want them to do so number one don't fast charge stuff um, if you fast charge stuff it will heat your battery up more than if you are normally charging it so if you've got one of the old five watt chargers that used to come with the iphones use that to charge it overnight um, it will stop itself charging automatically when it is full. Um, Apple has software built in as well that will learn when you charge a battery if you do it on a regular basis. Mine is all over the place, so I don't think it really uses this anymore, but it will basically charge itself up to about 80% full and then stop until it expects that you're about to wake up. Like half an hour before that, it will charge it up to full and then um, yeah basically by learning what time you typically unplug your phone it will make sure it's ready for that time but not leave it fully charged all the way through but in general you don't need to worry about it charge your phone when it needs to be charged don't charge it when it doesn't need to be charged that's basically it like if you need to put a bit of extra juice in your battery to get you through the day do it don't worry about it let apple deal with it all in the background in most cases that's the best way the only thing i would say is if you try and jam like 50 watts into your phone yes it will only take as much as it can but the faster you charge your phone the more your battery heats up that is the only thing probably that you can really do these days that will actually maintain the battery health um, they're also very efficient these days batteries last quite well i wouldn't worry too much about it stop stressing and just enjoy your device Alan B Unboxing and News asks, I have answers. I think that the entire iPhone 14 lineup could or will have always on display and 8K video. It's a weird way of phrasing the question, but sure, we, we know what you're asking here. So will all of the iPhone 14s have the always on display and the 8K video? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. The always on display at least will only come to the Pro iPhones almost certainly because it needs to have ProMotion. And the reason that it probably won't come to the iPhone 13 models, even though they have ProMotion, is that their ProMotion only drops to 10 hertz. And the new iPhone 14 Pro displays are likely to drop down to 1 hertz, which basically means that it's only refreshing your display once a second. Now, that basically is what reduces the strain on your battery. Your processor is basically having to do very little work. Um, and that is kind of what we're talking about here, as well as obviously your, your display itself refreshing. Um, but you, your processor is only having to refresh the display once a second. So that is why it won't probably come to the regular 14s. Remember the 14s are likely to have the existing A15 processor in it, even if it is rebranded as an A16, and then we get an A16 Pro for the Pro models. Um, and in terms of 8K video, the amount of storage that that's going to take up is going to be enormous. So we don't actually know if the camera sensors are going to be upgraded on the standard 14 lineup or if it'll just be on the 14 Pros at the moment. Um, but bear in mind how enormous these uh, image files, these video files will be. You're talking four times the size of 4K. So if they do, it's probably going to be limited to 30 frames a second because the storage probably won't be quite as fast. There's probably going to be new storage controllers in the A16 chip. I wouldn't hold your breath for 8K on the 14. Randomness R asks, IK of answers, do you own any stocks like Apple stocks? Do you invest in real estate? What's your plan for the future? I really hope you can make a living on YouTube soon. Uh, so no, I own no stocks. Um, not interested in doing stocks. This is not financial advice. Uh, we bought a house. Um, we've got a couple of years left on that. So once that mortgage is complete, that reduces our outgoings a lot, which will help to make you know YouTube uh, more of a full-time potential. Right now, it's not anywhere close. Uh, 
But if you want to join the Patreons and help to support the channel month by month so that I can keep making this content, iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon or Patreon.com forward slash iCaveDave. Both works. We made it as easy as we can. And um, yeah, I, I want to give more value to the patrons. Just let me know what you want. But no, I'm, I'm not into stocks. I'm not particularly into crypto. I've got a couple of NFTs, um, which are more because I support the people that are making them rather than like as an investment of any sort. They're, that's not what I'm doing with NFTs. Um, and I think it's probably a really bad place to invest if that's what you want to do. Um, again, not financial advice. Uh, but I do this channel because I love doing it. I, I do it because I enjoy talking about Apple stuff. I talk about Apple stuff all day long anyway. I'll be reading and tweeting about Apple regardless of whether I was making these videos. Um, so would I love it to be a full-time job? Yes. Is it anywhere close to that yet? No. Bruce Grubb asks, IK Vances, Max Tech had a video on the M2 MacBook Pro overheating. Is this something to worry about or were they doing something that the majority of people just wouldn't do? Okay, let's, uh, let me just find my worm can and we'll open that. So, Max Tech, love you guys. Your testing is awesome. What Max Tech were doing in this video were trying to find something that would completely tax the system as much as they physically could, make it struggle, make it suffer, make it like really, really work as hard as they possibly could in order to see what happened in terms of thermals. What they were doing was 8K Canon RAW rendering with two pretty heavy duty LUTs on it and it it massively overheated. It went up to 108 degrees and this is not because Apple was being conservative with the fans. The fans were going at 7200 RPMs all the way through sounding like an Intel Mac. So obviously everyone panicked. Everyone was like, this is unbelievable. The M2 runs so hot. It's not right. It's not okay. Number one, this is not what M2 is for. M2 is the consumer level chip. This is the one that is designed for people that are doing basic stuff. The fact that you can do a couple of streams of 8K ProRes on this thing and edit it is great. It is not designed for rendering these things out at speed. Number one. Number two. When Everyday Dad, um, Gary I think his name is, uh, a fantastic channel as well. Very, very well produced videos um, and, and always kind of, kind of nails the opinions on these things. When he tried to replicate it, he used a different codec, I guess. I think it was um, Canon ProRes or something like that, or Canon RAW, but just with different LUTs. He was literally rendering the file for over an hour. The temperatures didn't get above 48 degrees. Fans didn't even kick in. It seems like there is a specific issue with the kind of file that they were doing. I think they offered to send it to Gary as well, so he could try and replicate the test. But in answer to your question, this is a very niche situation where they were specifically trying to tax the CPU and GPU as much as they possibly could. The media encoders are not designed for this specific codec, so they were out of the question. And um, With the vast majority of anything that anyone will do on these systems, it will never get this hot. Will it get slightly hotter than M1? Yes, it seems like it probably will, um, because the chips are clocked up from 3.2 gigahertz to 3.49 gigahertz, so about point three of a gigahertz faster just under but they've also made the individual cores more efficient all of these things all of these artificial benchmarks and i know this is a real render test where they're really rendering a real thing that's real but all of these things are not real world uses for the m2 chip specifically this is a consumer chip this is a consumer grade laptop even though apple insists on calling it a pro that for me, is the biggest issue here is that Apple should not call this a pro laptop. It isn't. It is a consumer version um, that just happens to have a fan in it. That is the big difference between the MacBook Air, which is billed as their consumer one, and the MacBook Pro 13-inch, which is billed as a pro one, even though it just absolutely isn't. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of all I can say on the matter is I don't know why... They're trying to make the system fail. I know it's interesting and it will get clicks and that's probably the biggest thing. But is it a real concern for people? I think it's it's up there with Bendgate and, uh, and Antenna Gate and stuff where in the real world it's probably not a drama at all. Not put me off yet. I think the bigger controversy here is the SSD speed stuff which we touched on very briefly earlier in the video. 
the new MacBook Pros are using a single 256 gigabyte um, NAND chip inside, which instead of using two smaller chips means that it's only got kind of half the bandwidth for getting stuff on and off of that drive. And that might cause people more of an issue. I think if you can afford to go up on the storage, I've never said this before, but I would go up on the storage, um, probably over the unified memory on this one. And that's a really weird thing to be saying, but I actually think that's the uh, the play right now. Um, so there we go. That's my thoughts on the whole overheating MacBook Pros. Is it an issue? Probably not. It's just a bit annoying. But that's it for this show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, you can go to icavedave.com forward slash merch to get a cool mug like this for coffee and only coffee or a cool t-shirt like this that also says Cupertino on it. And uh, maybe I'll do some more designs soon because I think the designs are getting a little stale. Maybe we need something new. Thanks to the Patreons. You're all beautiful, beautiful people. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.